All right, guys. So we're back, and this is somewhat like a season two for us. Um, super excited. We have uh, amazing guests. Malik is uh, with us, but he's a little frustrated, but we're not going to tell you guys why. But maybe I'll tell you later, just depending on how I feel. But uh, thank you guys for tuning in again. Um, it's the Trans World Podcast is uh, super excited to introduce you to our Trans World Pageantry Court. We had a pageant uh, this past weekend and we have some amazing individuals representing the brand who will also be on season two of Trans World Atlanta. So we're super excited to share that experience with you guys. Uh, before we get started, I am Raquel, uh, your boss lady and uh, Malik, the handsome, amazing co-host uh, who produces this show with me. Uh, we're going to uh, let Malik give you some highlights. Introduce you to our Trade Zoro Pageantry Court. Good afternoon. So, yes, my highlight for today is Marlon Wayman. Um, if y'all haven't heard, uh, Marlon Wayman's uh, child has came out as transgender. And the great thing about that is that he is absolutely loving on his child and supporting his child. Um, of course, we know sometimes that's not always the case when we're dealing with parents and especially with young teenagers or um, our kids that's, that just want to live in their truth. So shout out to Marlon Wayne score loving on his now transgender child. Absolutely. We obviously need more uh, parents like that. I don't think we really had the luxury of where we were growing up to have parents so supportive. However, um, I was uh, in a very liberal family. My grandmother allowed me to be whatever I was, whenever I was. Um, and we were church thumping people. You understand me? <laughs> Uh, uh, now, uh, you know, she wish a, wish a mother would, <laughs> well, you know, this is my grandbaby wishing a mother would, but uh, nonetheless, it's super uh, exciting to see parents supporting their children. I think we needed more of that uh, when we were younger. Uh, before we get started, before I allow our uh, trade world court to introduce themselves, we always start with letting you guys know that we lead with love and this is a safe place. Uh, we have lots of conversations. We talk about it all. There's nothing off the table. There are no rules. So however it comes is however we give it to you. Um, but we do talk about health. We talk about support. We talk about love, mental health. Uh, we know how that's attacking our community, but not just our community, the entire country uh, is being affected by mental health at this point. Um, we are about love and community. So our topics are all about community, all about real people doing real things and surviving real situations. Um, and with that said, I want you guys to uh, take turns introducing yourself. And of course, we're going to lead with our beautiful queen. If you will start and then we'll go with our mister, our mister, and then we'll allow our index to introduce himself. But tell us who you are um, before we get into the good stuff. Um, my name is DeAsia Amari Prescott. Um, but my stage name is Deasia Blush. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I am a Cassidine. Yeah, that's me. Can well, uh, my name is Sugar Infinity Sanchez. On stage, my other government name is Tasha King. And yeah, weeks. <laughs> my name is Terrence Lamont. Now on stage, I am Psych Star Valentino. All right, Psych Star Valentino, legendary Casadine. I think for any of us that have been in the community for a little while, we know how legendary Ka the, the name Casadine is. So I want to start there. Um, Blush. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you become a Casadine? Tell us about that. Um, oh, we. So, um, Tanisha Casadine started house cast that I um, eventually became my mother but uh so let me see I'm trying to say it fast so she was on she and I were both on a cast I was of course on the junior cast she was on the bigger cast um and two myself and another castmate um we were getting ready to compete for a pageant in 2006 and um everybody at the time was kind of pushing for that particular girl the other girl to you know do well in the pageant everyone was helping her for months before the pageant so about two weeks before the pageant um, was supposed to happen, she asked me, she said, well, Deja, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to come to my house and help me. So, 
And, and honestly, I tell people this all the time. Honestly, I didn't like Tanisha in the beginning. Um, she, I felt like she was rude. She was mean. She used to call me a little girl and stuff. And I was like, girl, what you want to say that? She said, little girl, just come to my house. Said, okay. So I went to her house and um, she had me to go get a dress out of her drag room. And she showed me, and it's so funny I have one sitting here. She showed me how to how to stone. So a lot of people don't know that we stall with Bobby B. Take a Bobby hand, you pick up a little bit of glue, you pick up a stone, then you take your finger and you slide the stone off, you put it down. And you just keep going, pick them up, put them down, pick them up, put them down. So we did that for like two hours. And I'm like, girl, okay. So then she told me to come back to her house the next day, but she asked for me to bring my thing that I was going to utilize for the pageant. So when I brought I brought my stuff. She was picking up my stuff, like look, and looking at it like, what the hell is this? You know, like, what, what's this? She called my jewelry, palm jewelry. And I was like, well, girl, this is what I got. This is what I'm going to use, X, Y, Z. So she started playing music. And in the background was, could you hear Anita Baker? And I started singing the song. And she said, oh, do me a favor. Go get that dress that we were stoning yesterday. So I went and got the dress. She told me to put it on. She said, no, you're going to wear this. And um, so later that, you know, on when I got ready to do the pageant, she she brought the dress. She bought me a presentation. She brought me a sportswear. And I already knew how to do my makeup very well, she said. And she said, well, you just need to add a little color. So I put on a little more color in my makeup and stuff. So when the reg registration part happened, she took the registration forms. And she said, I'm going to fill this stuff out. Go rehearse your talent on the stage. When I walked on stage at the time, what she be before she became my mom, I was Yeji Emo I Dupree. When I walked on stage, they just said Yeji Castanai. And I looked at her in the audience and she looked at me like, yeah, keep going. Model the clothes. And I was Yeji Castanai ever since. Wow. Wow. Well, that's, that's, I, I mean, that's an honor, right? Yes. Um, I never, we never had a conversation about it um, after that. Um, but I tell people often, I, Sanisha um, did then, a, you know, when I was a newcomer, help me with my drag. But as, as I got older, our relationship transcended into something else. She didn't help me um, so much with my drag. Tanisha became like my actual mother. Um, me and my mom, me and my biological mother, right now we have a really great relationship. Um, but when I was younger, we didn't um, so much. And, it, and, it, and a lot of times I think more so because she just couldn't teach me what I needed to know as far as becoming a trans woman um, and the type of woman I, that I would want to be. Um, so Tanisha helped me with that. Our, our relationship was based in my real life, my everyday life and teaching me some some things that I, I needed to know. Did you have any pushback from um, any Cassidines that were already, of course, Cassidines? Um, I did. I really, really did. Um, I will say, honestly, I was ghetto. You know, it can be at times. I was really, really loud. Um, I'm from Savannah, Georgia, and it was really hard to be who and what I was. You know, so early, I left home at like 13, 14 years old. You know, I moved to Atlanta at 17. Um, so when Tanisha met me at like maybe 18 or 19 of it then, um, I was like a hot head and they, they were like, oh, uh -uh, girl, you know, we classed over here and da, 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 And some of her Memphis children, which was, you know, where she started the House of Caspar, they were like, uh, uh, girl. But I actually won a lot of them over because I am very unapologetically who I am. You know, they uh, appreciated that. Oh, girl, you don't got to like me. That's fine. Girl, keep it cute. Long as you stay it over there, and you know we eventually that kind of like you know because like um, one of her her kids, uh, Trent Simmons, uh, who's a really phenomenal makeup artist, he and I are very very close. Um, because I'm me, he always tells me just be the best version that of yourself that you can be. Yeah, I believe that too. I think when we're the best version of who we are, we get the best results anyway. I, I don't think you can really fully um, operate without being authentic and be successful. I said this in one of our personal conversations earlier, um, in order to be successful, you have to survive. You have to survive something to get to success. So I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, Psych, tell me how you got into the pageant world. Which side? <laughs> what a lot of people don't know is I actually started as a female at the age of 16. Okay. Uh, the reason I stopped that because it led me down a path that wasn't good and I ended up in prison twice. So the second time back at out, I still love to entertain 
but I didn't know drag was still for me, but I chose to be a male entertainer. And still to this day, I still get boxed out because I'm not fully masculine enough. But I don't want to put on the female stuff, but I just want to be me being broadcast when I have. And this platform that actually gave me that that to do. So as in so it, go ahead, Malik. Okay. So if I may ask, um, how long did you uh serve in prison? Excuse me? How long did you serve in prison? Which time? Both. Yeah, both. Well, the uh, the first time I did a year, I was out for three months, and I turned around and did two years. Those were in two different states. Okay. So if, if it's not too personal, why did you go to jail? Like, what did you do to get a year, and then three months later, you clearly did not fully learn your lesson because you went back, and you did two years. Can you walk us through that experience? then tie it into the decision you made to become a male entertainer and and to be exactly all that you are. Well, like I said, when I was doing drag, it was more challenging because you get more opportunities at a young age, fast money, men that are desirable men that you wouldn't choose. So the first time I went to prison was for assault with a deadly weapon for defending myself over, I guess, uh, should you call today a client at a club. And um, before that, I was already on probation in Ohio, which gave me my second turn. When I was arrested in Kentucky, for the first charge, which was assault with the daily weapon. The daily weapon was actually a liquor bottle where I was actually getting my ass whooped. And I jumped behind the bar and I did what I knew to do, defend myself. I grabbed the liquor bottle and I beat that bitch then. He goes, sorry to say it like that, but nope. I'm skinny. I'm, I'm, I'm tall, but I'm fried. I'm, I'm not as big for my height. So I did what I had to do. And on that time, I was actually in a mental health prison. And then when I got it out, they released me and I had broken probation in Ohio during that time for being in that situation. So that revoked me and put me back in prison for the second time. And that was for Rob, um, like I said, I challenge him with the threat. So, so you really my side, Rico. Oh. <laughs> this, this is the thing. I think we all have a past. Um, yeah. Well, I think if we judge people by their past, we could miss out on something so special and so unique. I don't think that. I think everybody has room to change and get better and rewrite their own stories. As a writer, I believe that firmly. Right? I'm always writing fucking stories. Like I'm uh, rewriting stories. So I, I believe that you can always turn a page and write another story for yourself. So um, kudos to you for figuring out your lane and staying in it. I had to to put you through some times. Oh, yeah. That was you. I see that over there. He's still doing it. Look at this. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I tell. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, we're not leaving you out. We're just, we, we're, sa- <laughs> we're saving you for last, but Tell us, like, I know that you have another crown right now, if I'm not mistaken. You, you're you holding another crown right now as well. For me? Trick trip, yes. So okay. tell us, tell us about your journey in, in pageantry. Um, actually, today makes six years that, that I've been doing this. Um. I just, I, when I had, I had moved to Iowa and one of my friends that I know from high school, who is now my drag grandma, um, would always see me outside when she come home from the club, like, you always hear, just come hang out with me, come hang out with me. So one night I finally went, this is the time she's like, hey, you should come do this. And I'm like, what is, she was like, well, for you, it's like karaoke. I'm like, what you mean? She's like, my, that's the best way I can explain it. So I came, um, did their open stages a couple nights. 
then one of the owners was like, yeah, you need to compete. I was like, oh, okay, whatever that is. <laughs> I'm, to, I'm like, what is that? They were like, basically what you're doing now, but you gotta have a suit. I'm like, oh, okay. They still never really explained it. And so when I did it, I got first art um, to Iowa. Mr. Iowa, you were surveyed in my first art. They have a great at Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but I see it. So then uh, after that, I ended up going to nationals. I was like, whoa, whoa, got to not explain this. But I had a good time and I enjoyed it. And I just kept doing it because from there, like when I left nationals, I had four bookings to go to other states. I was like, wait, you could really travel for real for us. So I stuck with it. And even with me sticking with it, like other things that was bothering me in real life, other issues I was having, me coming to the club and doing this was making me happy. And I was forgetting about all of that. And it was helping me get through things. So I just stuck with it. So how many titles have you obtained? Eight. Just eight years. Give me, give me some. What? So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Cole, we got a a pageant boy. Malik has won several. Malik, how many pageants have you won? Twelve. Ooh. I, I was trying to spice it. I was trying to spice it. Um, you know, Malik is kind of quiet these days but he wasn't always so quiet and he wasn't always so humble I remember when I first met Malik his personality was so damn big I was like let me tell you something I don't know what y'all doing in Atlanta but bitch I got a real job a real house that shit don't impress me but you're cool but he was he's so quiet but I have hope at the same time you know, I think I I'm well otherwise he got a normally we used to be loud. I remember when I was little, he was loud, but you could be a quiet person in the room and still be make noise. And I think you do that very well now. Thank yes. You. His personality has changed a bit. But I think that comes with just getting older too and experience and learning and understanding your power. Um, I've never had a problem when I walked into a room and I'm typically the quietest person in the room. And, and short too. I bet, when I met you, you real short. But yeah. I, I, I do want to add though that I had a career, um. So all of that was for fun, and I just kept winning, so I just kept doing it. But I had an active career in law enforcement, so it was just fun to me. Let me let me ask you guys. So we know that no. there are eight hitters this issue. I'm sorry. We know that there aren't lots of pageants that allow you to run as a trans man, trans woman, or in a MX category. How important is it to be able to run as who you are versus a drag queen or impersonator? How important is that to you? Uh, first, they are not. I, I will say this. One of the things that I like about this particular system is the MX category. There are not a lot of pageants for MX. Um, so I give my son is my, my gay child, someone I mentor. Um, so to, um, when I actually, when I read the contestant packet, I stopped reading the portion for myself and I read the portion that was for him, for him um, because I love the fact that Sai is, is non-binary, non-gender conforming, and, but he asks us to he, she, them, they, we, uh, <laughs> um, but um, because I've been, I followed his career even before he lived in Atlanta and I saw and I've heard people say things that are so harsh and so rude, <laughs> excuse me, to him that I, I messaged you and said, you need to do this because I know, like I've watched him get ready for the show and said, oh girl, I want to put on uh, some lashes and they were like, oh, you can't do that, you're male lead. I think that's, um, really saying it. Um, so I, I was so excited, um, Needless to say, I was excited that, you know, he, he won and that, that I also get to reign with him. For myself, um, a lot of times, because I'm trans, um, people tell me that my drag isn't valid because I like huge hair. I like a lot of makeup. I like big lashes. Um, I don't, I don't feel like just because I'm trans, it means that I necessarily have to be minimal. Um, I think that I'm trans. So, um, that, that's that. That's the, that's the end. But whatever, like, it's just like, to me, like every, every woman is different. Every cisgender biological woman is different. Um, every, every trans woman should be allowed to be different. And my off stage persona, you know, like me every day, I wear no makeup at all. And I wear my real hair pulled back in the ponytail. But I know I can get through. I'm, I'm passable. I'm, you know, I, I slide on through. 
Um, but when I get in drag or when I um, hit a stage, I, in my mind, I'm going for what a fantasy would be. I want people to be wild and odd um, in, in like, damn, how the hell did she make that hair be that big? You know, or how many pairs of lashes are those? Because I wear, like, Saturday when I won, I had six pairs of lashes on the top and two on the bottom. The average trans woman <laughs> is not doing that. But I don't want to be average. Gotcha. And it's nothing wrong with that either. I think um, how we do our hair, how we do our makeup, the clothes we wear, it's all a part of expression, but it's also a part of who we are. Mm-hmm. It's us expressing who we are. Um, mm-hmm. If it's too big for you, then that's your problem. You know, if it's too small for you, then that's your problem. So I, I, I know like when I see what I see when I saw you tonight, I was like, oh, she is all the way done up. OK. I and understand. And, and this was my tone down. Oh, so can I get it? Okay, real, real, real shit. My king and my MX. What y'all told me, don't put on no gown. Because I wanted to put on the gown. And big, big hair. It probably wouldn't fit. It probably wouldn't fit in this frame. It would have been about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like large in the life, any, everything. One, because when I stepped up in Padgett from Newcomer, I didn't go to miss. I went to the plus category. I used to weigh 265 pounds at my bed. And they told me everything had to be bigger to make me appear to be smaller. So even though I've lost a, quite a bit of weight, I still like that look. I like everything huge. I don't know. I like, look at the earring. So I, I would like to shift just a second. Um, mm-hmm. I am very glad that you all are open and talking about your life. Um, HIV, um, because our platform is centered around education. Mm-hmm. And so I'm excited that you all are our, our very first core and that you can really tell your truth and you can reach people because you live it. Mm-hmm. I just want to say I'm excited. I applaud you all for, um, just being bold and unapologetic. And I and I, I I'm I'm just so glad that we just have we have you all. Cheers. Yeah. I think like it, it's, it's, it's not our fault. And it probably wasn't the person's fault who contracted us. And we want to stop that from happening to the next person so that doesn't hurt them as well. We didn't know, and maybe the next person may not know, but if we're out doing what we're supposed to do, they should know. Right, because kind of walked into that. We kind of halfway walked into that. Um, both we both two of our trans world court, two of our winners are HIV positive. So that's where that came from. From those of you that are listening, um, yes, we do have two um, amazing, beautiful people that are HIV positive, and they're walking in their truth every day, and they're here to educate, and they're here to share their stories to empower it to help someone else. Um, I think that's important is, as Malik said, everything we do is based around community and educating. Um, our number one goal with Trans World at to season one was to save lives. Yes. Tell mm-hmm. stories. So we just got this over your head. Feel like they're and- by themselves. There, there are kids in Iowa. There, there are black boys in Kentucky who feel like they're by themselves. And we wanted to show them that it's a whole world out here and and you're not by yourself. You know, DM us, call us, whatever you got to do, but don't give up. And, and it's, it's important for people to know that they didn't give us the space. We created the space. They didn't offer the chair. We took the chair. Mm. And I'm a, I mean, I'm cisgender. I'm a cisgender woman. I identify as lesbian. So I'm not trans. Uh, and and I think that may be a little confusing to some folk as well. Like why? Well, no, why well, no it's because there are, I mean, you can still be um, inadvertently affected by the things that affect us because if, if you and I are friends, we are connected. And that means that if something hurts me, it's also going to hurt you. Um, no, I, 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 had to, I had to kind of get in somebody's butt one time because um, it was a gay boy. And um, when 
One of my former friends, well, not former friend, one of my sisters was killed, China Gibson, in New Orleans. Uh, he said, oh, well, why we got to do all this um, marching and all of this um, stuff to raise money for her? What they got to do with me? I said, well, okay. that trans lady had gay sons. And those gay sons, some of those gay sons are your friends. So those, those people, they're hurt. So you, you should be hurt as well. You know, if something happens to me, the site's going to be upset. Yeah, so if Sike is upset, I know his mom. His mom is going to be upset that he's upset. So we are all connected. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're all connected. A lot of times people don't think so, but we are all connected. And I, I always tell people, um, a lot of times in our community, people that, that, that look us, like us, the brown people, um, when things have, have a lot to do with gay, LGBTQIA+, they say they don't have the straights, say they don't have anything to do with them. Well, before I was trained, or before I was anything else, I was black. I came out black. <laughs> I came out black. I came out of the POC, a person of color. I uh, I grew up with a transgender cousin before trans going into the world. A thing. There was no word for it. So in the eighties and the nineties, um, my cousin was trans, and she she was beautiful. She was all the things. She won pageant after pageant. I mean, she she was beautiful. She was everything. I told you I grew up in a liberal family, so the the path was very paved for me when it was my turn. Mm-hmm. But um, I grew up um, with a trans cousin who was like my mother's sister, and um, Tommy passed in HIV of AIDS, and this is in the early nineties. And like I said, there wasn't a word for it when I started the experience. I was a, a mm-hmm. child who lit and had a cousin who was trans and it was normal in my family. It was like my grandmother would say, leave that boy alone. Don't touch his dresses. And it is like, dang, he, but yeah, I mean, it's a boy, but who, whatever. <laughs> oh, no, oh, you yeah. right. So I'm from a country ass town where things did not make sense either. I'm from Savannah, Georgia. And um, I'm very open. My name is legally changed to DeAsia, but before I was DeAsia, I was David. And they literally would call you something like Miss David. That go together. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That was kind of how it was. You're right. So like we were referred to him as he, but that really meant she. Y'all. I mean, it was it was crazy. But my grandmother would like totally support everything and still say he. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, because it, it, it was right. You know, um, I watched um, the first season of uh, Trans World Atlanta and I was very, very, um, I was enlightened because I've, I've known all of the cast for a long time, but you know, you know people, but yeah, you know, of course, when you get to see them in, in, um, in a, on a bigger screen and a bigger role, um, you learn things and Raquel Henry she mentioned like being in the room with her grandmother changing and I was the same way um, so my mother and I have four uncles they are all adopted a black man and a white woman and my grandmother um, she didn't really like many of my cousins but she liked me for some odd reason and when she would get dressed she would do things and she would like uh-uh, pay attention and I used to always wonder you know at that time six, seven, eight, nine years old why is she telling me to pay attention but then when I get dressed and I, I know that it's wintertime outside, I need to have on stockings, you know, I, I, oh, she was doing this. She was trying to teach me. She already knew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, and we are, you know, we, this, this interview um, is going to continue. We're going to have four parts to it. So for our audience, I want you to know that we're going to interview each of them individually so that we can learn more about them as individuals. Um, but one last question for uh, this interview. Um, we've already mentioned that you guys are going to be in season two of Transport Atlanta. We're very excited about that. But this is a pageant question. Why the Trans World pageant? And this is for each of you. I want each of you to tell us why did you decide to run right. for... You go first, Kenya. I don't keep it. You go first. So... I decided to do it because when I very first started out, like I said, I started out doing MI pad. From MI, I jumped straight to Mister. I'm the first first trans to do two Mister pad, and so 
doing those two things, it was different. Doing a Mr. One was like, yeah, okay. Like, it, I mean, I enjoyed it. I had good experiences, but in some aspect, you have to feel, well, oh, I'm not masculine enough or I'm not masculine enough for this because you were on the cisgender male. But in the MI system, I feel like they, in some ways, they make you feel like you're still the person you was born and you're trying to look like a male when I look like this on a daily basis. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing all that other stuff. So for me, this is like, I finally get to be me. I can don't have to be too masculine or still feel feminine. I can literally just be me because I want my people. Yeah. Don't. Okay. Well, I'm not trained. So I would say I started in drag and I started out of drag as a male. So the MX is that actually the first MX system that I know. And I can be me. I can wear heels if I want. I can put on as much as makeup on as I want. I can have the wigs on. I'm not put in a box as most pageant males and females are. I get to bring the best direct that I have to off and see let just letting the people light up by my drag without being judged as a boy or as a girl. Yeah. I, before you go blush, it's important to know that we had that totally in mind. We wanted to yes. have an MX category so that you can be all the beautiful things that you are. It was important. I remember in our meeting saying, yeah, we're going to have an MX category. That's what we're doing. And they, they were like, what? Yeah, we're going to have an MX category. Like, why wouldn't we? Like, who else is doing it? Where else do you get to be exactly who you are? Where else? Um, so, like, Raquel um, and Sean and I were sitting and we're meeting. And Raquel was like, well, okay, ma'am. We have an MX. I mean, because it was like, I felt like I was fighting for my rights at that point. Because it, cause it wasn't something that everybody else was doing. And the first thing I said is we will not be like everybody else. We're, we're not doing it. Yeah, we could do it like anybody yeah. else. So whatever we want to do, we will do. And it doesn't matter how other systems are ran. Period. Exactly. So, this. Yes. I'm like big on spirituality and I love God to the most of fullest. And sometimes when you go through things, you don't understand. Like I said, I came to Atlanta five years ago in December, searching for hope. Didn't deny time and time and time again. This is an opportunity of lifetime. God brought me through some things to give me what I want, but it's even more special because that I don't. Everybody knows this is my drag mother and this is my drag godson. I get to reign a whole year with my family. God has blessed. And I thank you all for this opportunity. It is it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Um it's a um so we'll sign oh. um so I have been very honest and open and uh, vocal about um, having in a drug addiction issue. Um, I have been off and on addicted to crystal meth for about five years. Uh, so I was clean for two and a half. And back in March of this year, uh, I had something disappointing me. I completed for a pageant. I lost very disappointed um, and I relapsed. Uh, so after I relapsed, um, T-WAP, uh, Trans Women um, of Color Healing Project, um, Raquel Henry um, and Toy Washington, they really, really helped me. Uh, and not just financially, they helped me um, mentally. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but Raquel has always been very close to me, but she's um, become somewhat of a spiritual advisor um, for me. And she asked me to find something that made me happy and do it. And drag makes me happy. Um, uh, about 46, 47 days ago, I OD. Uh, and when I OD, uh, when I came to the first thing I said was, I need to do a pageant. And people were like, what do you mean you need to do a pageant? I need to do a pageant. I need, I, I needed it. I needed, uh, uh, as you said earlier, sometimes performing and entertaining is an escape from the reality. Um, 
I I said this in interview. Um, like currently I'm experiencing um, living situation issues, basically being displaced uh, and compete, getting ready for trans world gave me a way to kind of like escape my reality for a moment. When I was putting stones on stuff, I would be somewhere else. I was envisioning myself on stage. And I am, I am now and have always been the type of person when something tells me no, I realize that anything that's, that's good for you, you're going to have to work for. So if there's a hurdle in the way, you have to jump over it to get to whatever the prize is. Uh, like getting ready for the pageant, um, I had two designers to back out on me um, for stuff. Um, and literally my presentation that I ended up winning that category, I got a presentation made at four o'clock in the morning. Wow. Uh, I was getting dressed to leave to, to come to registration, left my house at 12, but at 1145, my dresser called and said that he couldn't make it. He wasn't going to be able to make it. He got called into work and he was ready to start. Okay. Well, I'm already dressed. I'm going to registration. So I got in the car, got on the highway. I text Raquel, um, there was an accident on the highway. I sat on the highway from 11, 45, 12 o'clock until like 12, 30. And then it was just like everything just kept, but there was a small little voice in my head that kept, keep going, keep going, keep going. And I think that um, my mind served me correctly because I didn't do the pageant necessarily just to win. I needed, I needed to win so that I could have the platform. Um, HIV and AIDS awareness is important, but me, you spoke about this before. We've talked about mental health. Mental health is so, so important because um, most people who know me know I'm articulate, I'm smart, my brain works just fine, but I was still able to come to, um, to succumb to, to addiction. Uh, and a lot of times we often say, oh, well, addiction is only based for people who are, who are the weak of mind or the fates of heart or whatever, but it can happen to anybody. Um, and then, you know, the HIV and AIDS part of that or the STI, STD part of that is also um, those things typically start with with unhealthy mental um, unhealthy and unhealthy mental state. You know, pe- like for me, the first time I ever got an STD was because I was trying to be a hot girl, and I was trying to be a hot girl because I didn't like, I wasn't comfortable with me. You know, I always I always tell people I um, I, I um, applaud parents who instill a certain level of confidence in their children because those children grow up and they are not looking for for acceptance from people. They already have it built in. Most times gay people, we don't have that. Um, a lot of times, you especially trans people, you know, most times, you know, we not, we're not authentic. I'm just now authentically being myself at 37. So, okay. you, oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> but, no, but you know, I'm like, why? You know, it gets better with time. Well, I'm certainly glad that you um, kept pushing your way through that day. And um, here you are now. So wait, I, I just want to ask, Willie, you were a judge for the contest. Yeah. Could you tell that I was only, I was back there dressing myself? I competed in the for a long time. Um, When I found that out, I was more impressed by you. Oh, thank you. Like, people normally have a team. Well, like, actually, really? actually this, this, was, this was the team. We, I know, but, but a few things that we couldn't do on our own we, without each other. <laughs> yeah, but I, 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 I was just simply amazed. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have yeah, we saw the camera guy back there, um, because obviously, I'm thinking about season two. I'm thinking about recording. I'm thinking about getting great footage. And I said, go back there and take pictures of them and record and he was like can we do that I was like trust me they've already signed a waiver whether they realize it or not that is true yo he hasn't cut off now I think you now Mr. Cal you had almost got that, that cameraman cussed out because he came in there my breasts were exposed and I asked that he, he I said uh sir hold up I know I signed a paper but you're not taking no picture of me and my breasts out he said he said everybody I've seen titties before sir first of all these are breasts not titties all good people have titties I don't bark or on it uh but you know the one thing he I, I, I peeked back there when the camera guy came. I was like, damn, is she getting herself ready? What is she? Where what are people at? And nobody said anything. So I was like, oh, okay, well, whatever. I mean, that's cool. But then I came back and I saw all of you helping each other. And we caught that on camera. And I thought, I mean, they're all competing 
and the only people they have is each other. I was like, there's something unique about this. Now, I didn't know that you guys were female. I had no idea. I just saw I me. Mean, I'm just looking at this. Yeah, me neither. I'm in work mode. I am trying to, you know, keep my queen, my emeritus queen, uh, mentally in the game, right? Because we had a lot of obstacles um, that day, just like you. We had Josh out to work out here, We had tons of them. So I'm saying to her, you just be pretty and let me work. I got it. So I'm seeing all these things. I'm like, God, that seems weird, but I don't have enough time to really tune into it. I see it. And I know this isn't normal for pageant world, but okay, I don't have time to really uh, check into it. But I remember just telling my guy, get that picture, take a picture of that. And I can go back to it and create a story later. And just so happened you all won. I had no clue. It, it was crazy because he had, his situation was he had to work. They wouldn't let him off when he was supposed to be off. He couldn't have, he couldn't buy the ride. It was just, yep. wow. Then, then I, then because I, like I said, um, I'm going through living situation issues. Most of my drag is in storage. The person who had the key to my storage didn't show up until five o'clock. So I left, y'all didn't even know. I left and had to drive across town to go get my evening gown. And then when I got got it to where I was, the dress didn't have a zipper in it. So I, I was planning to just dip the dress, you know, turn it backwards, zip it, and then turn it around. Well, there was no zipper in the dress. So I had to get sold into the dress. So I walked out into the audience and just found a, round, a random person to ask, hey, I will pay you to just sew me in the dress. And they're like, how do I do that? I'm going to walk you through it. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so crazy. Wow. <laughs> We had the same kind of day oh, Lord. behind the scenes, you know, and, and we're running a business too. You know, we're yeah running a pageant, which is a business and we're trying to make everything perfect for you all. Our yeah, day yeah. with the exact same. I, I remember at one point, Malik goes to the bank and forgets his whole wallet. I'm like, <laughs> oh God, um, I can't, it's, 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 God is, God is so amazing. And I want, I do want to say you guys were very accommodating, you know, checking on us, make sure everybody had, you know, water and whatever they need, uh, even the temperature, because it was cold as hell at first and it cut the air down. You know, it, it was really, um, it was very, very appreciative. Now, I'm going to help with a few, um, some of the administrative stuff. I'm going to help. I'm a, I promise I'm going to help. But I always tell, I always tell God to help too, because you're this way. I'm glad it worked out the way I needed to work out the business where we can use a little more structure. There we go. More structure. And I always tell I always tell people that like with me, um, because I was a high head, because I have a a, a a what they can people would consider a bleak past, um, a lot of times they people get they miss out on the skills that I have. I have a set of administrative skills uh, administrative skills that are unmatched. My track record shows that. Um, the last two contests, contests that I gave up, um, I had more contestants than when I won. Uh, when I gave up Black Continental, and I was a pandemic queen. I won a pageant, you know, right before the pandemic. So coming out of the pandemic, it was very hard for you know a lot of contests to have contestants. I had ten contestants, and I gave up. Um, and then I won a pageant where you have to compete with a person. I'm a former Miss Dual Dual of Distinction, and it's really hard to get people to compete together because you have to do every category together. So it scares people. But we had three, you know, three um, duos. So it was really good. So like, I, I'm really excited to work. Team, you ready to work? <laughs> but it, that was important to us, um, bringing in a court in the quiet rooms, ready to help us build. But just like you guys went through all those obstacles throughout your day, we went through the same type of obstacles. So we had every T crossed, every I dotted. We controlled the controllables. A lot of it we couldn't control because people didn't. Oh yeah, call. it it was a it was a nightmare of a day. And like I said, I just remember seeing my queen worrying about disappointing me, and I'm like, I'm not disappointed. And she I, she is that she is that woman. She is definitely that woman. Oh, Florida. Florida. My son is playing in a fo national football tournament. I fly in from Florida. I get there at four. Thank God I got there. Because I think when we see each other, it's like, okay, she's here. We're okay. 
But it was really like, we're fine. I kept saying to them, we're fine. Yes. And, and, for, and, and, and for me, I was fighting anxiety because I had to yep. sit still and not be her right hand. Yep. So it was almost hell for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I, I watched, um, I'm a big person on body language and I watched Trains at World Atlanta. Um, I watched it. Actually, I watched it twice because um, I watched it by myself and then I, um, told my mom, my biological mother about it and she wanted to watch because um, my, my mother is a lesbian but she's not first on a lot of things that have to do with trans people um, and so I told her, I said, watch this so you can understand me even better and she even noticed the way that you you are with your wife you know, that it, it's a certain type of way you can tell when a man really, really loves who he's with so, because of the way he yeah. So when I was saying um, right hand. I, I I was meaning to producer Raquel. Oh, uh, as far as men, as far as men, but hold oh, that more. Oh, yeah. yeah. The best yes. man I mean. But of course, yes, that's that's natural. Yeah, like I can see, I can even see you being being on the judges panel. Like, I want to make sure she all right. <laughs> but uh, um, you know, it it was a. Uh, it, the night turned out how it was supposed to turn. Yeah, it was just a try. It was a trial, but this is the trial. Yeah, yeah, you know, like got what we needed. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where we looked at each other, we laughed at the end of the night, and I said, "I got everything we needed." We, yeah, we took God's glory on that, and we didn't care that we did. We wasn't worried about one person coming because it was about making sure you all were okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I was really, really and I hate to check this thing. We gotta go. We got far over time for this particular show. Um, and we don't cut anything out of the show. So, like, oh, I that confetti. Oh, yes. Period. <laughs> now, I'm glad we got to go because this head, my head is hit. Thank you so much for um, hanging out with us. Um, couldn't be more happy. It was always a good time. We call this a cookout because when black folk get together, at a cookout, we talk, we laugh, we cry, we get a little bit of all. We, we, I did cook, so my court is getting ready to eat. Um, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> cool deal. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining us for It's a Trans World podcast. Again, we're here to educate those about the trans experience as well as the non binary experience. Um, we explore everything on this show, and we're so excited. Um, I'm your host, Raquel, my handsome host, co host, Malik. We are here to stay and we're so thankful for the experience until our Trent World uh, Court. We thank you. We appreciate you. We're super excited to work with you. And we want you guys to remember that love is love. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Until next time. Thank you.